let's talk about free agency. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Philly Sands. So, video cast here. We're going to have in our 2021 2022 uh, Philadelphia Phillies free agency preview, right? So, we're going to talk about some players that are going to be coming off the books this offseason. Um, so, we have a lot to talk about in this one. Now, guys, before we get into this video, please subscribe if you have not yet. Please turn on the notification bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. So, uh, I apologize for the past you know, month. Uh, me uh, covering the 2021 MLB postseason. I've been very busy uh, with doing that, and now that that has ended, I could finally, you know, turn my attention back to the Phils, right? Of course, my attention was always on the Phils, uh, but I uh, just decided to cover the postseason for my uh, third year. I've been doing this for three years, and all three years I've been doing it, I have covered the MLB postseason. Uh, so I enjoyed every single year, another good year of covering the postseason, but now it's time to turn our attention back to the Phils uh, and focus on them a little bit more. So free agency starts six days after the last game of the World Series. All right, so the last game of the World Series was on Tuesday night, which means that free agency will start on Monday. Uh, so it will start on Monday, uh, November 8th. And uh, I'm really uh, you know, looking forward to this. It's going to be very interesting all season, not to mention about the you know, collective bargaining agreement, which expires on uh, you know, midnight of uh, you know, December 2nd, right? Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with that, right? Do we see a lot kind of happening? Uh, I don't know. My answer to that is I don't know. I, I don't think it's going to affect uh, the start of next season. I, do, I just don't. And, uh, and the reason why I say uh, no is because of the fact that we had a short 2020 season where Major League Baseball lost a ton of money with no fans in the stands. They still lost money in 2021, which was a full 162-game season with fans in attendance every single game, right? So throughout the whole entire 2021 season, fans, we're at the game, right? Of course, at the beginning, it was a little bit more limited, but, uh, you know, you know, good portion of the season, 100% capacity was allowed. Uh, and they still lost money on the season. So imagine how much more they're going to lose next season, let's say, if uh, a season was not played. I uh, Just imagine that. Just imagine uh, the financial blow they're going to have to deal with if they do not have a season next year. So it's pretty much inevitable they're going to have to come to a certain agreement uh, you know, so for the season to take place next season. They have to. I mean, uh, it's just, it's just going to kill the sport more than it already has, right? I mean, the baseball's already uh, not doing so well, and uh, they're just going to lose so much more money next season. They're going to lose hundreds of millions of dollars if a season is not played so it's they pretty much just have to come to some sort of degree they have to work something out uh and that is why i do think we do see baseball next year right i mean i, I don't really think it's much of a question for me i mean maybe there is a, a work stoppage but either way we can't control it so we, we can't worry about it because we can't control uh so we just have to change our reaction to it uh so uh, that's the only thing we can control uh so some players are coming out the books this offseason you heard the news uh, you know, a couple of days ago that the Phillies declined 2022 options for left fielder Anthony McCutcheon and center fielder Odubel Herrera. So they are both gone, right? Their options have been declined. They are both uh, free agents, right? They officially become free agents, like I said, six days after the final game of the World Series, which is on Monday. Uh, you know, so that is when the, you know, official offseason starts, I guess you could say. A little bit surprised about Odubel Herrera. I mean, I think he would have been a decent bench bat, you know, moving forward to next year. The way I liked him as an everyday, you know, center fielder, uh, but as a bench bat, you know, bat off the bench, uh, you know, a cheaper option. I uh, actually didn't mind that. Uh, it uh, turns out that he is gone. And Andrew McCutcheon, we all know this was going to happen. Most likely, uh, he has his options declined, right? I mean, that was a no-brainer. I mean, that was just a no-brainer. Uh, you know, the money they're going to have to pay him next season. I mean, he got paid $20 million this past year. Uh, so, uh, it was pretty much a no-brainer for the Phillies to decline Andrew McCutcheon's options for next season. Uh, I definitely would have done the same thing. But it's sad to see a guy like that go. A good clubhouse guy, a guy that was respected, and a guy that I really enjoyed watching, um, you know, through his ups and downs, you know, his three years in Philadelphia, and uh, another guy that's going to be coming out the books this all season is Archie Bradley, he was brought in in January of this year on a one-year contract, uh, and uh, he's set for free agency, a guy that really struggled with injuries this past year, I mean, he really, really got the injury buck, uh, and uh, he was on and off the I.L., or showed, you know, some signs of being very, very good, we all know how, you know, good he was, you know, as a lead pitcher at his time, you know, with the Arizona Diamondbacks was not 
handed by the Reds last season, which was made absolutely no sense. And that is when the Phillies made a very smart signing of, you know, signing R2 Brownlee. But uh, it just didn't really work out. Uh, I was disappointed with his performance, too inconsistent. But he went through ups and downs. Like I said before, everybody goes through ups and downs, but his ups and downs were just way too dramatic. I mean, uh, you know, he had this really, really rough stretch uh, where he just looked awful. You know, it just it seemed like he allowed hit after hit after hit. It seemed like they just had a, a great vision when he was when he was pitching. It seemed like his stuff just caught way too much of the plate, uh, and it just got hit around way too much. Uh, so I was I was disappointed. Other times it looked absolutely dominant, uh, but I feel like the times he struggled uh, showed more than the times he looked dominant. So I think it's time that it, maybe you can negotiate a cheaper one-year contract for for Archie Bradley. I think maybe you do it, but I think it's time you also say you know goodbye to him as well. He was part of the problem uh, with this bullpen this year that was still uh, pretty bad. Uh, this was a pretty bad bullpen, uh, and I do associate his name with some of the struggles that took place. Right? I mean, whether he was you know a huge factor in it or not, he definitely you know played a part because of his injuries. Right? I understand the injuries are not necessarily all you know all the players' fault, but uh, I mean <laughs> they're not playing. You know, they're not they're not playing. Uh, you go take a look at David Robertson, the guy that only appeared what was it, you know four or five times in the Phillies uniform that two-year contract that he had. Uh, you know, and uh, I, of course, if he would have played, if he if he was able, uh, but uh, because of his injuries, they you know kept him from playing. Uh, so I was pretty disappointed with Archie Brad. I expected more. As I said, he did show signs of you know his you know showing his full potential, but I didn't see enough. I didn't see it enough. I didn't see it consistently, and I didn't. I just didn't see it enough. I think it's time you say goodbye, unless you can negotiate a, a cheaper one-year contract. And moving on here, we have Hector Neris, a guy who is very controversial, not only for the Phillies but in this city, right? A lot of a lot of Phillies fans in this city have some mixed feelings about Hector Neris, right? He's he's kind of a very emotional guy. Uh, he likes to show you know a lot of him motion. He started out this season in the closing uh, position, and then eventually he was moved to more of a setup, you know, role, uh, you know, which I thought suited him much, much better than the closing position. Uh, you know, so I'm glad that Drew Girardi made that move. But once he said it, put him in that setup, on that setup spot, he was very, very good, right? From a point around, I'm going to say, uh, I mean, you know, past, you know, early July, he was very good. To finish out the season, he was very, very good. I mean, he had that horrendous, horrendous appearance of San Diego Padres, but after that, it seemed like it was pretty smooth sound for him the rest of the way. Of course, he made his mistakes here and there, we all do, uh, but uh, I was very, very impressed with him to finish out the season in a setup role. Uh, he went out there and did his job, right? I mean, you know, collected his finals and career strikeout in September, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm definitely going to say he definitely had a decent season. Uh, he definitely had a decent season, much, much better than last year. Now, if he would have been back in the closing position, and I don't think I'd be having this conversation right now, right? If he would have finished out this year, if he went the whole year being in the closing role, I definitely don't think I'd be having this conversation right now. But because of the fact that Joe Girardi made the smart move by putting him in the setup role, uh, you know, it made him so much better. And remember in 2016, uh, he had a very good 2016 campaign. And it is because of the fact that Pete McCannon had him in a setup role. Uh, so I really, really, really like Hector Neres in the setup role. I think he's a very underrated relief pitcher. And yes, I have hated on him for a long, long time. And there's been plenty of losses where I come on here and I'm just screaming and just not happy. I don't scream, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm just not happy with Hector Neres and I and I just really, really go off on him. But you know what? Uh, you know, you know, now that you know dust has settled here, we haven't seen Phillies baseball in over a month now. Uh, you know, and of course, you know, even leading up to the end of the season, he was very, very good, right? Of course, like I said, he didn't make his mistakes here and there. Uh, one that comes to mind, you know, you know, recently to end off the season was against the Colorado Rockies, right? I mean, the Phillies were, you know, kind of a competitive game. They allowed the two-run shot. I forget who that was, too, uh, but uh, kind of put the Phillies out of reach. Don't make bad pitches, right? I mean, you're going to make a bad pitch sometimes, uh, so I understand it, uh, but uh, I think you bring Hector Neres back. Uh, Hector Neres is a guy that I would bring back, right? You get him on a fairly cheap deal. I think he likes Philadelphia. You're going to go to a length that's Said he is liked by Philadelphia. I do think he likes playing in Philadelphia. And uh, like I said, I think some people are going to disagree with me on this, but I think he's had a very underrated career in Philadelphia. So I think it's, I think you got to bring Hector Neres back. If you keep him in the setup role, though, I think in the setup role, he's very, very good. Like he's normally pretty healthy. You don't really have to worry about a lot of injuries with this guy. Uh, the only thing that does concern me a little bit is the splitter, uh, you know, with the opponents kind of catching on to that. I, th I think a little while in that period there, I'm going to say maybe June and, you know, early July, it seemed like they just seemed to have 
have a pattern. It seemed like they kind of just found out who he was with that splitter. But for some reason, it went the other way. It seemed like he, his splitter got dominant again. But his splitter can be very, very hit or miss. It could be great some nights and not so great the other nights. So, uh, you know, that is one thing he needs to work on. My overall opinion is you got to bring Hector Neris back. And uh, Brad Miller, moving on to position players here a little bit. We're going to go back to another picture. But Brad Miller uh, had himself a great 2021 campaign for the Phils, right? He got a lot of playing time. He's a platoon player, a guy that, you know, didn't really play much to start the season. After he was here in 2019, uh, showed some promise, didn't get as much playing time. Got this in free to go to the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, you know, got you know, pretty much a full-time role last season. And uh, I tell you what, man, I cannot believe the amount of games that Brad Miller played in this past season. I mean, he could play anywhere. He's the kind of guy that stepped up in May when the Phillies were dealing a lot of injuries, whether that was with JT Muto, Bryce Harper, uh, you know, these, these big, you know, bats in our lineup, but this were, we're not there because of injury. Um, you know, so it's hard to believe he played in 140 games. Uh, just, you know, four shy of Andrew McCutcheon, who led the team in games played. Um, so it's hard to believe a, a bench player, a so-called bench player, a platoon player uh, that wasn't really supposed to play all that much, was third on the team in games played. Uh, one behind Harp with 141. Uh, so, uh, you know, 140 games played this season for Brad Miller. That's something very impressive with. And not to mention the 20 home runs he hit over the wall, right? He had some power. Uh, and, he, and he's a hit or miss guy. And, and this is the problem, right? He stepped up in May when we needed him to. When, you know, we were doing this some issues with Harp and JT, uh, you know, and some others. Uh, but the problem is, is he was very inconsistent as well. Then, of course, they all, you know, have their ups and downs. But he just, he was very inconsistent. He was very hit or miss at times. Uh, he, he struck out looking a lot. Uh, that was one, that was one big thing. Uh, you know, couldn't, couldn't really keep his mouth shut and got thrown out of the game quite a few times, but uh, you know, he had kind of some trouble staying in the game. Definitely a valuable asset for the Phillies here in 2021, despite them missing the playoffs, but he did to finish with a winning record, which in my opinion is irrelevant, but I think some would disagree. I think he made his mark this season with the Phillies. I mean, he got a good amount of playing time, can play any position. You see, and one night you saw him at, you know, first base, and you saw him at second base. You saw him out, you know, on left field, and you saw him, it just, he, he played everywhere. He could play anywhere. Uh, and, and that's a valuable asset for any team. He's not the worst defender in the world. He's not the best defender in the world, but he's also not the worst defender in the world. So, my overall, you know, opinion, you got to bring back Brad Miller. Uh, you got to bring back Brad Miller. He's not perfect, but who is? But he's one of the better, you know, bench plus platoon players in this game. Uh, you know, he in this game, he's a lefty too. In Citizens Bank Park, you saw what he did: twenty home runs this season. Uh, me saying I'm impressed, and I think that's an understatement. So, uh, you know, great job by Brad Miller. He got paid only three point five million dollars. I mean, it was this is basically a steal for the Bill. So, moving on here to Matt Moore. Uh, uh, coming out the books. Uh, what is there to say about this, right? I mean, he you know got some time in Japan uh, in the last season when the Major League Baseball was playing a shortened season. Japan made you know played you know many many more games than the MLB did, and uh, he did very well. He was on a winning team. Looked like you know he kind of was you know kind of you know looked a little washed uh, you know 2019 years prior. Uh, you know, leading up to that time, and then he went to Japan and kind of got his confidence level up. Some of the teams in the, you know Major League Baseball kind of looking and saying, "Hey, I think we're going to give this guy another shot." And the Phillies were one of those teams. So it wasn't like the the worst move in the world, right? I mean, they took a chance on a guy, but the back of him as a you know a, a back of the end starter in the rotation. I don't really think that that was the smartest move, like the, what the Phillies did. I and mean, that's really really pushing it. A team that was supposed to be contending for the division. You're gonna give this. You're gonna bank on Matt Moore to be you know the starter back in the rotation. I don't think. so. So, and that's how it worked out. It was a disaster, right? He had that one really good start. Was it six no-hit innings against the Reds? It was that August something? It was, uh, you know, I'm going to say you know, mid to late August. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was very, very good that game. And that's pretty much the only game that I, I could say, like, wow, he did well. I mean, he just was just off all year long. I mean, out of the bullpen, they tried him with the bullpen. Uh, maybe he has had an occasional good inning in there, but I, I mean, it was very rare. Uh, you know, I just was not impressed at all. His stuff, this he, he didn't have any stuff. Uh, I was talking about the stuff. He didn't have any stuff. Uh, he just was awful, uh, and there's no other way to say it, right? Nothing personal. I think he's a good guy, uh, but that's what you expect when you pay a guy $3 million. But it's hard to believe that he got paid $3 million. Brad Miller got paid a ha only a half a million more than Matt Moore. Uh, I cannot believe that. Can you believe that? Uh, I just, it's hard to believe. So, Matt Moore, uh, goodbye. And uh, another guy that's coming out of the book is Ian Kennedy, right? Came over here in July in the uh, Kyle Gibson, you know, uh, you know, Hans Krause trade with uh, Spencer Howard. 
Uh, so, uh, you know, a guy that's coming off the books and he was terrible to start off this tenure with the Phils. You know, uh, you know, you know, blown some seeds for the Phils, right? Got some time in that closer position. Uh, you know, kind of was off and on, but he showed some signs of being very, very good. Uh, but uh, at the same time, he showed signs of, you know, blowing some games, especially, you know, in September. He had some, some really bad blown saves in that month. But that one against the Colorado Rockies, and we pretty much had that game won. And then he choked. He choked. Uh, so he got paid about $2.1 million this year. Uh, I guess that's what you expect, right? Of course, the Phillies only paid about half of that. Uh, but uh, I just was not impressed, right? I was really excited when we got him. I thought he was, and he's old too. He's an older guy, you know, pushing almost 40. Uh, I was just not impressed. You saw what he did with the Rangers, right? It's a tell the the Phillies is destroying relief pitchers for some reason, right? They always, uh, just for some reason, whenever they acquire a relief pitcher, they just go way downhill. I, I don't know why. Uh, it's a trend. Uh, so uh, they just cannot manage relief pitching. He was better than Ethan Embry. He was better than David Phelps. He was better than Brandon Workman of 2020. Uh, but he, the bottom line is he wasn't good. Uh, he just wasn't good. Uh, so Ian Kennedy, a guy that maybe if you get him on a really cheap deal, maybe you bring him back, but he's not a guy to be chasing. Freddie Gallis, the next name on this list. Uh, it was cool. It was kind of like a nostalgia moment when he was traded. It wasn't really like, wow. Look what the Phillies did. He went out and, and traded for Freddie Gomez at the trade deadline from the Baltimore Orioles, a guy who was on the IL when he was acquired. Uh, I, I, it wasn't like one of those moves that were like, wow, oh my gosh, man, this is going to really seriously impact this team, and this is going to get them to the playoffs. No, no, no. This was a nostalgia type move. At least for me, I thought it kind of was. It kind of reminds me of the rebuilding you know, phase that Phillies went through. I guess they're, I guess it never really ended, right? It was season baseball, and coming up next year, it's going to be 11 years, 12 seasons. We have not seen it. But anyway... Uh, and he's the kind of guy that, you know, kind of reminds me of that phase, right? You know, the 2015, you know, of course, he was the everyday shortstop starting 2015 after Jimmy Rollins was dealt to the Dodgers and that Zach Eflin deal. Uh, but, uh, you know, he kind of reminded me of that, right? So uh, he comes back and he was all right, right? I mean, what, what do you expect? Freddie Gomez is a mediocre shortstop. He, he's a very good defensive shortstop, but he wasn't very good defensively this year uh, for the Orioles and for the Phils. Uh, you know, kind of a down season defensively, a, a player that really relies on his defense, really like help out his uh, his main game, right? Which he's known for his defense, at least he's supposed to be. Uh, he was all right. I mean, we all know he's a switch hitter, which is definitely an asset. Uh, planted a little bit of pop. I mean, he got hot. I mean, he got hot, right? I mean, you know, hitting his home runs came in bunches, but you saw on that stretch where what did he go? Like almost 0 for 15. Uh, you know, that was just an epic disaster. Uh, so, uh, you know, maybe he's a guy you bring back on a really, really cheap one year deal. I mean, I really like the fact he's a switch hitter. If he could bounce back with the glove because the Phillies desperately need help on the left side of the infield. Dita Gregorius, a guy who is, uh, you know, has still one more year, you know, left remaining on his contract. And, you know, Bobby Dickerson, new infield coaches working with Alcon to improve his defense. Hopefully he gives Dita Gregorius a visit as well. Uh, but maybe you keep Freddie Gowers around. Hacking on, you know, maybe the fact of him bouncing back defensively and then he comes back uh, next year uh, and has a bench spot uh, in a role and uh, maybe see some playing time when, you know, guy, you saw it this year, right? With Ronald Torres, you know, really Really, you know, got a lot more playing time after Alec Bowman. Just, they just learned he just couldn't feel. Uh, so Ron Torres got a lot more playing time. Maybe you see that with Galvis, but uh, I think it's unlikely. Uh, you know, it's maybe the only scenario maybe where you keep him around. And also he has a little pop too, a switch hitter, as I said. Uh, who is, in my opinion, better on the left side of the plate. Most switch hitters are. But anyway, uh, that is my opinion. All in all, I think Freddie Galvis is gone. I, I don't think he's. I don't think he's coming back. Wouldn't be opposed to him coming back if the price was right. Jorge Bonifacio, pretty much just a, a no-name player that is coming off the books. A name that I don't really, uh, not really going to talk much about. Got a few at bats for the Phils this year. Uh, uh, wasn't anything to write home about, right? I mean, he's coming off the books. He is 100% gone. And Brady Lau, a guy that didn't even put on the Philly P hats. Uh, the Philly P jersey. I mean, came over here from the Seattle Mariners, was cut in mid-October, so he's already gone. Uh, so uh, why did I even mention that guy's name? So not as many free agents as you might think, right? I mean, not as many free agents as you might think. You might see some guys getting on tender. That's like Travis Jankowski, maybe a guy like Roman Quinn, uh, you know, so you might see guys like that go. You already see, you know, Odubo Herrera got his option decline, so he's already gone. He's not even on this list, but uh, it's very, very interesting to me. It's very interesting to see what's going to happen this offseason. Uh, you know, with the lockout and everything, I, I'm kind of intrigued about that. I mean, I don't really believe what any of the baseball writers tell me. I just don't. I mean, remember last season when I kept saying the, the season was going to be delayed, season was going to be delayed? Now, that was a little different circumstance. This year, it's more about, you know, finances. But I could see a lockout happening, uh, you know, like right after. But I think that they have to get something done. I mean, the amount of money they're going to lose next season if there's no baseball it's just like, it's going to be awful. I mean, they're, they're going to lose, continue to lose more fans. I mean, they don't care about the fans, but it all comes down to money, right? I mean, and the amount of money they're going to lose, they have to realize they're going to just lose so much money. And 2020 season is going to have an impact on this decision. I mean, if 2020 was a normal year, let's say, and none of this ever happened, 
then I would say I'd be really, really concerned about next season. But because of what happened in 2020 is because they're still losing money as we speak right now. Uh, that, I mean, they have an enormous amount of pressure to get a deal done. Uh, so, and, and the relationship between the owners and the players is not good right now. I will say that. I've been saying that for a while now. But uh, it's definitely not very good. But I think they're just going to have to work something out. I think both sides, I don't think it's going to be pretty for both sides. But I think they're just going to have to work something out. Because they can't lose any more money than they already have. It's all about money. That's all about money. So some big free agents coming out the books this off season around Major League Baseball. Buster Posey being one, a guy that is getting older. Out of the Atlanta Braves, 2021 World Series champs are coming out the books. The face of the franchise, Freddie Freeman, Dan Sweet Swanson, Chuck Peterson, Eddie Rosario. The list goes on. Uh, and uh, Carlos Correa, the American League, uh, you know, champion you know, with the Houston Astros, is coming off the books. You know, Corey Seager, 2020 World Series champion with the Dodgers. Um, so, uh, you know, some big name players are coming out the books. You know, Trevor Story with the Colorado Rockies. Uh, so some names I want the Phillies to target, right? I would love Kyle Schwarber of the uh, Boston Red Sox, right? He's coming out the books. I think that I, I saw an article that someone predicted he signed with the Phillies. I think he'd be a great fit for the Phillies. I think he'd rake at CBP. Uh, the injuries do concern me a little bit, uh, but I think he'd fill a void out in left field. But the only thing that really concerns me is the injuries, right? And he, and he hits for a very low average. Uh, so you're kind of, you know, banking on that. But I think that maybe you just sign him to a one-year deal and see what happens. Uh, he's, he kind of just seems like a kind of guy who fit with, with the Phils. Uh, I really like what he did with the Nationals in June. Uh, so uh, I think Kyle Schwarber is a realistic option for the Phils. Not too expensive. Because uh, so, this free agent Scott looks very, very good. Especially at the, the left side of the infield, right? With the, with the shortstop. So anyway, uh, you know, maybe Kevin Guzman is a guy that the Phillies maybe look at a little bit. But they don't really need a you know front end of the starter. I think they need a back end. I mean, there's no question. They just need one back end starter. Uh, so, uh, you know, other than that, I think the rotation is pretty set. But their bullpen needs a lot of work. That is what's going to require a lot of work this offseason. An everyday center fielder, maybe a guy like Star Marte, I think would make some sense. But maybe you could take a look at Daniel Hudson, for example, a World Series champion with the Nationals in 2019. Uh, you know, it was the guy that recorded the final out, right? Struck a Michael Brantley when he really once was, was like on one knee. That was just bizarre. But anyway, uh, you know, so maybe that's the guy that Phillies look at. So guys like that. So first weekly update coming up tomorrow. Big announcement. Stay tuned. Big announcement. Big changes are coming uh, to my operations. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you have not yet. Please don't forget your bell. Please like this video. Comment on this video. Share this video. Check out the social media. Link in the description section. At Phillies. At Stove. Instagram. Check out Instagram. Car text 267-225-3392. Email me. PhilliesHoundsEvent. Gmail.com. Uh, so uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, you're watching the Phillies Hounds of Videocast. I'm Luke, and I'll talk to you later. I'll see you guys.